Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. And thank you for joining us on this second day of ISLA's 11th Post Trade Conference, the first one in a virtual format. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Marie Verhelst, and I head at your collateral business development team. It has been said before, we're living in unprecedented times, challenging in ways that just two years ago we would never have imagined. And of course, we're all missing the ways we used to see each other, discuss, connect, and chat over coffee, a beer, or a glass of wine. I know that these informal conversations can lead to great ideas, business opportunities, teamwork, and partnerships. But here we are, virtually together. We had to adjust to the environment we live in, and I think ISLA have really pulled out all the stops to make this the best possible virtual conference. That's why I'm incredibly honored to co-chair this conference, and I'd like to thank the ISLA and the Eventrop team for inviting me and for organizing this event. As always, they've done an amazing job putting together an agenda of topics relevant to all of us and making it worth your while to connect and to stay connected. I'll talk about that more in a minute. Before that, I'd like to thank my co-chair, Ricky Smith, who did a wonderful job yesterday of navigating us through the first day of the conference. And of course, a big thank you as well to the sponsors for their support to this important industry event. I hope you've had some time to connect with other event delegates on the platform already and that you enjoyed the discussions yesterday. I most certainly did. A quick reminder as well that all sessions are being recorded and will be available on the platform for all registered attendees to rewatch a few days after the event. So if you missed the session, no worries, you can still watch it. That's one of the advantages of virtual conference. We'd like the event to be as interactive as possible, and there are many features on the Swap Park platform to allow just that. Let me remind you of some of them. During all the live sessions, you can submit questions. The panelists will answer them the best they can. You can also use a chat feature to talk with fellow attendees, and you can participate in polls. If you still have questions, go to the Frequently Asked Questions tab on the platform where you can read through the relevant guides, but also ask questions on the chat or email info at eventrock.co.uk. So now that we've gone through the practicalities, what's on the agenda for us today? I'm looking forward to hearing today's keynote speaker, Dr. Carmine Di Noia. He's Commissioner of CONSOP and Chair of the ESMA Post Trading Standing Committee. I'm sure he'll provide very valuable insights into ESMA's views, intentions, and observations on the post trade landscape. After that, Andy Dyson will chat with Rupert Perry, the founder of Pyram, and they'll be going on a journey to explore what has changed in the post trade world over the past decade. There will be four panels today. In the Industry Associations panel, representatives from ISA, Pazla, EXDA, and ICMA will discuss the key challenges and opportunities they are each facing in their respective areas and explore the common themes. The panel will be moderated by Stephen Fisher from BlackRock. I think there will be a lot of interest for the ESG panel later today. As nicely formulated on the conference agenda, ESG is expected to be the single biggest agent for change in the way we think about securities lending. The panelists will discuss the challenges they face to comply with ESG objectives while still maintaining an efficient lending program. They'll also uncover specific operational questions around ESG, such as how to manage voting, corporate actions and collateral. The panel will be moderated by Matthew Chesson from Aberdeen. As you probably know, ISLA has been working with Allen and Overy on a joint ESG white paper. The paper, titled Framing Securities Lending for the Sustainability Era, will be made available on ISLA's website on Thursday. Amongst other things, it considers the role of securities lending in the transition to a sustainable economy. As an intro to the ESG panel, Emma Dwyer and Kelly Sporn from Allen and Overy will be presenting some of the paper's key takeaways. 
Before moving to the third panel then, Tina Baker from ISLA and Jamie Pollan from Bank of America will give us an update on the work that ISLA Legal Steering Group have been doing over the past year. If there's one good thing about this pandemic, then it's probably the acceleration of technology and take up that it triggered. What are the business benefits and opportunities of digitalization in our industry? That's what the third panel of today will relate. The discussion will be moderated by PJ Vijamarino. I recommend you also to take a look at a white paper that Isla released earlier this week on the same topic. And then finally, the fourth and last panel of the day will reflect back on the two days of the conference and discuss the key highlights and conclusions. Jonathan Lombardo will be moderating this one. Okay, with that, I think I've given you a sneak preview into what's on the table today. So uh, without further ado, let's get going now. It's my great pleasure to introduce our key, keynote speaker of today, Dr. Carmine Dinoia. Dr. Dinoia has been the commissioner at the Italian Securities and Exchange Commission, CONSOP, since member of the ESMA, chair of the Committee of Economic and Markets Analysis, the Post Trading Standing Committee at ESMA, and vice chair of the Corporate Governance Committee at the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Please enjoy the session.
Pierrot, good afternoon. Thank you very much uh, for uh, for the invitation by, by ISLA. I'm very happy to be here. I'm here as uh, uh, chair of the post-trading uh, standing committee at ESMA, and I'm also a commissioner at Council, the Italian Securities Regulator. As you know, ESMA is an independent EU authority that was established on the 1st of January 2011 and works closely with the other European supervisory authorities responsible for banking, IBA, and insurance and occupational pensions, the IOPA, and the European Systemic Risk Board, the ESRB. ESMA's mission is to enhance the protection of investors and to promote stable and well-functioning financial markets in the European Union. As an independent institution, ESMA achieves this aim by building a single rule book for EU financial markets and ensuring its consistent application across the EU. ESMA contributes to the regulation of financial services firms with a pan-European reach, either through direct supervision or through the active coordination of national supervisory activity. So in short, uh, ESMA's roles are promoting supervisory convergence, assessing risks to investors, markets, and financial stability, completing a single rule book for the EU in fin financial markets, and directly supervising specific, specific financial entities. What do we do in, uh, for, in, in post-trading? Now, the post-trading standing committees uh, undertakes uh, ESMA's work relating to post-trading, focusing on the one hand on the clearing obligation and risk mitigation requirements for financial and non-financial counterparties, entering into OTC derivative contracts, as well as the related post-trading services. And on the other hand, on settlement, as well as on requirements applying to CSDs as financial market infrastructures. The PTSC also provides a forum for national competent authorities to exchange experiences and views on the implementation or compliance with post-trading related regulations and certain related supervisory issues or cases. Supervisory convergence is the consistent implementation, application and supervision of the same rules using similar approaches across the EU. The purpose of promoting supervisory convergence is to ensure a level playing field of high quality regulation and supervision without regulatory arbitrage or a race to the bottom between member states. So to do so, the PTSC organizes workshops to discuss real supervision cases in order to foster harmonized practices among supervisors. The mission of PTSC is threefold. PTSC contributes to ESMA's role in the achievement of a single rule book through the development of technical advice to the European Commission and the preparation of draft technical standards and policy reports on post-trading matters, in particular under CSDR and the relevant part of EMIR. PTSC has an important role in building a common supervisory culture by fostering convergent supervisory approaches and practices, such as through the development of guidelines, recommendations, opinions, and Q&As. And lastly, but uh, not least, absolutely, PTSC contributes to develop ESMA's policy and coordination role of NCAs supervising CSDs participating in Target 2 securities. So what, is, uh, what have we done in 2020? So uh, obviously, an important part was affected by COVID-19 related measures. First part was on monitoring of settlement fails. In March, April 2020, the higher volatility of markets due to COVID-19 triggered a higher velocity in the exchange of assets, including increased collateral movements, margin calls, and substitutions, which heavily increased settlement instructions, volumes, and overall turnover, which led to a surge in settlement fails. Most settlement fails were related actually to operational challenges in delivering securities rather than, as you may classically think, a lack of cash. These challenges included lower operational capacity of participants' back offices who had to operate under business continuity plans, in particular working remotely. The accumulation of backlogs only made things worse. So ESMA coordinated with the CSD and CAs and closely monitored the levels of settlement fail rates across the EU, as well as the measures taken by CSDs and their participants to address settlement fails. 
We had also the new postponement of the entry into force of the CSDR uh, settlement discipline regime. Why? In February, ESMA published a final report on draft RTS to postpone the date of entry into force of the Commission delegated regulation on settlement discipline to the 1st of February 2021, which was a technical postponement. Indeed, the report aimed to accommodate the additional time needed for the establishment of essential features for the functioning of the settlement discipline regime such as the necessary ISO messages, the joint penalty mechanism of CSDs that use a common settlement infrastructure like P2S, and the need of proper testing of the new functionalities. Given the COVID-19 situation, further to a letter from the European Commission, and having analyzed the implementation challenges highlighted by market participants, regarding their preparation for the new settlement discipline regime under CSDR, ESMA developed a draft RTS to postpone the date of entry into force of this regime until the 1st of February 2022. Then we have, a, uh, let's talk about the ESMA reports for the CSDR review. Now, there is, as you know, a targeted review of CSDR, which was launched by the European Commission in September 2020. So following a meeting with experts from member states, DC has conducted a public consultation until the beginning of February, and is expected to publish a report on the outcome in Q2 2021. This should already provide some insight about the legislative proposals that the EC intends to publish by the end of 2021 for the legislative process to start. So CSDR refit is thus expected to be published at the earliest in the second half of 2022. Although targeted, the consultation run by the EC covered many topics. CSD authorization and review and evaluation process, cross-border provision of services within the EU, internalized settlement, technological innovation, banking type ancillary services, and last but not least, settlement discipline. It has generated more than 90 contributions from a broad range of stakeholders. Among these answers, we have duly noted that the key points for ISLA members would be to get clarity on the scope of CSDR, in particular as to the application of settlement discipline measures to SFTs and to amend the settlement discipline regime, in particular its buy-in component. These issues are in the hands of the European Commission. However, ESMA will actively support the EU institution and will continue to contribute ideas on how to improve the settlement discipline regime. To feed in the CSDR review, ESMA published in November 2020 its first two reports on the implementation of CSDR, covering first, the provision of cross-border services by central securities depositories, or CSDs, and the handling of related application by national competent authorities. And this is a key measure in the, in, in, in the Commission Plan, new CMU Action Plan, the Capital Markets Union. And the second, the internalized settlement. Now, the report on cross-border services and handling of applications highlights the findings related to the provision of services by CSDs in other member states. The CSD's cross-border activity was measured through the study of the links established between EA CSDs and of the services provided to participants and issuers from other EA states. No major variations in the provision of cross-border services have been detected since the entry into force of CSDR, but most respondents do foresee a potential increase in the coming years. The report reflected uh, the challenges, in particular linked to the application process to provide notary and central maintenance services in relation to securities constituted under the laws of other EA states, as set out under Article 23 of CSDR, and includes suggestions to enhance the existing process.
In particular, ESMA advocated for simplifying the process with proposals ranging from replacing it with a simple notification procedure to streamlining and clarifying certain aspects of the existing process, in particular as to the determination of the relevant law, the assessment of the measures the CSD has to take to comply with the law of the host member state, and the prerogatives of the host member state competent authority in the process. The report on internalized settlements, or the second one, presents the findings related to the settlement activity which does not take place through a security settlement system operated by a CSD in the EA. It takes into account the responses to the ESMA survey on internalized settlement addressed to NCAs and trade associations and includes an analysis of the internalized settlement data based on the quarterly reports sent by settlement internalizers under Article 9 of CSDR for the period Q2 2019, Q3 2020. While no major risks were identified during the period covered by the report, NCAs identified some risks related to this activity, the most common being operational risk and custody risk, which could be mitigated through adequate identification of the client's accounts in the vault and the improvement of the operational processes. What uh, you know, lies ahead for 2021 in the settlement area? So what are the challenges for, 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 for these uh, you know, settlement and the PTSC? So uh, first, uh, there will be more ESMA input to feed in the CSDR review. ESMA will report to the Commission on various aspects of CSDR implementation in order to inform its review. Service has been launched and been launched on the provision of ancillary banking type services by CSDs, the use of fintech by CSDs, access requirements, i.e. the rules on access to CSDs by issuers between CSDs and between CSDs and other market infrastructures like trading venues and CCPs and segregation rules as applied by CSDs and their participants. ESMA will publish reports on at least the provision of banking type ancillary services and on the use of fintech by CSDs by mid-2021, and depending on responses to the other service on the other topics as well. There will be more CSDR supervisory convergence work as well. In particular, we will have CSDR, uh, CSD supervision peer review because in 2021, ESMA intends to launch its first peer review on the supervision of CSDs, providing cross-border services or participating in uh, interoperable links. This peer review is mandated by, and this peer review is expected to be achieved in 2022. ESMA will develop guidance and other supervisory convergence mechanisms, such as guidelines, Q&As, and real cases discussions related to CSDR requirements. In particular, in relation to the settlement discipline regime, as it is due to enter into force on the 1st of February 2022. One set of guidelines to be published in 2021 relates to the reporting of settlement phase by CSDs. And we have seen this has been a very important you know, topic, especially you know, during the crisis. ESMA will also implement a dedicated IT system to facilitate the submission of settlement phase reports by NCAs as received from CSDs to ESMA and to centralize the received data. The reporting obligation will become effective after the entry into force of the settlement discipline regime. ESMA will continue monitoring the level of internalized settlement and the level of CSD settlement efficiency based on the reports received from competent authorities. Then, you know, there is a possible contribution to other related EC regulatory actions. ESMA will also follow the reviews of the Settlement Finality Directive, the SFD, and of the Financial Collateral Directive, the FCD, undertaken by the EC, on which public consultation had been launched and actually are still open, and it's very important to receive comments on this. The C report is expected by end of June 2021 
and should include legislative proposals to improve settlement finality and collateral framework. Then there is the digital finance package. Now, DORA on the cyber resilience of financial institutions, and MICA on markets in crypto assets, and the DLT pilot regime all concern CSDs to a certain extent. The DLT pilot regime in particular enables CSDs to operate DLTs SSS, benefiting from some derogations from the CSDR, CSDR requirements, subject, for, uh, subject to their NCA approval. It also enables an investment firm or a market operator operating a DLT MTF to record DLT securities and perform settlement, thus performing a CSD role, which would require appropriate safeguards to be established. So we have a lot of work to do. Now, let me conclude by saying that the quality and effectiveness of regulation and supervision can be enhanced by the interaction, respecting the different roles, between the public authority and all stakeholders. In this respect, uh, PTSC work is also supported by a consultative working group, which is expected to provide technical assistance and advice to the PTSC in all aspects of its work, and in particular, in the development of technical standards or guidance in relation to the relevant legislation within the area of competence of the PTSC. It is also expected to assist the PTSC in assessing the potential impact of the proposed technical standards and guidance. Actually, PTSC has recently launched a call for the renewal of its consultative working group. The deadline was last Monday. I hope that many of you applied. And finally, let me mention a birthday party where all of you are invited, though only virtually. ESMA turned 10 on the 1st of January 2021, so 10 years of growing from a committee of securities regulator, you remember CESA, to a fully-fledged supervisor. 10 years of working with and for the EU citizens. 10 years of achievements and challenges in keeping investors' trust in capital markets. ESMA started a second decade as a mature market supervisory authority part and parcel of the EU and global regulatory framework, with a real impact on the way financial markets function. The growth in ESMA's profile has helped raise awareness of our role in protecting investors and ensuring orderly and stable markets. By completing the single rule book for the EU financial markets, supervising EU-wide entities directly, conducting risk assessment and promoting supervisory convergence Across EU member states. So the party is because ESMA will host an online conference on March 23rd to reflect on the process, the progress the authority has made as a financial regulator and look to its future. So inspiring confidence in Europe's financial markets. Now registrations are still open. So I thank you for listening today. I thank you for the attendance today and to our party. Thank you very much and bye.